5.2.1 tan x equal to 2.22. So your x is going to be shift tan of 2.22. What answer do you get for x? The two decimal places. Six. 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 X plus 10 degrees is equal to 5 comma 759. Right? So, so the first thing here, my, my suggestion is isolate the, the set text. But as you can see on the left hand side, we can't divide by anything. So convert the set to what? Of course. So this is the same as 1 over sign of x plus 10 degrees that will be equal to 5,7,5,9 okay you can't use your calculator by saying shift set it's not possible <laughs> so you will have to convert the set to what to cos first then use your knowledge of equations here the denominator is a one you cross multiply you get one equal to 5,759 cosine of x plus 10 degrees. Right? Then you need to divide both sides by 5,759 to isolate the cos x plus 10 degrees. So if you do that, you get 1 over 5,759 equal to the cosine of x plus 10 degrees. Okay, allow me to put that cos x plus 10 degrees on the left hand side. So this will be cos times x plus 10 degrees is equal to 1 over 5,7,59. Now I can use my calculator because I've got a ratio which is between minus 1 and 1 on the right hand side. So this becomes x plus 10 degrees is going to be equal to shift cosine of 1 over 5,7,5,9. Okay? If you simplify that, what do you get? Whatever answer you get there, just round up to two decimal places. What is shift cosine of 1 over 5,7,5,9? Huh? 80,00. 80 minus. Therefore, x is going to be equal to, we take this positive 10 to the right, means 8 minus 10 gives you 70. So that would be wrong. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you following? Okay. Right. So that's, uh, that's why it is a 3 marks. Then 5.23 is sine x over 0, 0,2 minus 2. Sine x over 0, 0,2 minus 2 is equal to 1,24. And that's equal to 1,24. Right. My suggestion here is use your knowledge of equations. Right? The denominator of that 2 is a 1, the denominator of that 1, 2, 4 is a 1. So your LCD is going to be 0, 0,2. Okay? So you multiply every term by 0, 0,2. If you do that, you get 0, 0,2 times sine x over 0, 0,2 minus 0, 0,2 times 2 over, well, this is 2 over 1. Okay? That's equal to 0, 0,2 times 1,24 over 1. The 0, 0,2 is cancelled, so you end up having sine x minus 
0,4 is equal to what is 0 0,2 times 0 0,2 for? 0 0,2 for 0,2 Okay, then you get sine x equal to if I add those two of it 0 0,6. Yeah. 0 0,6 is Okay. Is there anybody else with any question? Do you have a question? <laughs> well, before I move on, when you are doing trigonometry, you have to be a master of solving equations. So, this step here is all about equations, which is what you did in term one. Okay, so you have to know how to solve your equation. Also, the other thing, I just need to let you know that sine theta, okay, where theta is any angle, is always between minus 1 and 1. Cosine of theta is also always between minus 1 and 1. So if you get your point like this, sine x and your ratio on the right hand side is more than 1 and it's less than minus 1, Tough love, you never get the angle. You never get the angle. It's not possible to get the angle of a ratio that's more than one and that's less than minus one. You can test it on your calculator. So if you get to a point like this here and you don't have an answer between minus one and one is your ratio, it means something is wrong somewhere. So from here you get x equal to shift sign of 0, 0.65. Well, what is that number? 40,54 degrees. Okay? Then we are dealing with angles, so your answer must be in degrees. Okay. Most learners, they won't write that degree. They will just write 40,54. But we don't penalize you. Okay? <laughs> All right. The first question. Can I have your attention? First question. Your amplitude, okay? I gave you a formula to calculate amplitude. So the best way is to use that formula. So amplitude is equal to y max minus y minimum all over 2. This is the best way of getting the answer. Well, some of you, you write an incorrect answer. You think you know, but you write an incorrect answer. Okay? So, your y maximum, if you look at this graph here, because there is no horizontal shift, even if there was, sorry, vertical shift, so your minimum is there, negative 2. Your maximum is here, which is what? Positive 2. So, all you have to do is, your maximum is 2 minus the minimum over 2, that will give you 4 over 2. So, your amplitude is a 2. If you know the graph, you itself very well. You can even locate your amplitude from the equation. Amplitude is always positive. Have you done uh, waves in, in physics or science? How come you're almost at the end of the year? It's out of the syllabus. Really? Okay, that was not being an advantage because you learn about amplitude in physical science. Alright, so amplitude is the length, the distance, always positive. Okay, so from the equation, you can also identify the amplitude is the positive of this value here. Okay, the positive of that, which is a, a 2. If you can't see it from the equation or from the graph, go by this way. Okay? If you use the equation, y max minus y minimum all over 2, you will never get an incorrect answer. Okay? Then 6.2. Write down the minimum value of f of x plus 3. Okay, who can tell us what does this mean? What does that mean? You have to ask to describe this. 
What does f of x plus 3 mean? Yes, Joseph? Yes. It means the graph of f of x is shifted 3 units upwards. Okay? So, this point here, if you move it by 3 units upwards, where does it get to? 1. So, you just get minus 2 plus 3. You get to what? 1. This point here, does it x equal to 2? Sorry, y equal to 2. If you add 3, it gets to what? 5. So, if the says write down the minimum value. It means minus 2 plus 3 gives you what? So, positive 1, rather. Positive 1, so your answer is going to be positive 1. Okay, they say minimum value. Okay, it's not the maximum, it's the minimum. So the minimum value is going to be what? 1. Okay. Are you following? Because some of your faces they are telling me, like, what are you saying, Mr. Chukwan? The question is asking for the minimum value. The minimum value means the value that, that you get. Where y is the smallest. Y is the smallest here or there. So if you move that graph by three units up, okay, you get to minus one, zero, and positive one. You get that. So the minimum becomes positive one. Are you following? This f of x plus three. It, it indicates vertical shift. In this grade, there is no horizontal shift I told you before. Okay? For both trigonometric graphs and algebraic graphs, there is no horizontal shift. So, you only encounter questions on vertical shift or reflection about the x-axis, reflection about the y-axis. That, that's it. Okay, now I'm going to give you an extra question. Okay, I think the question is already there. The question is already there. Let's sketch. It's already there on the next page. So, the graph of sine x plus 1, okay, it means you draw the graph of sine x, you move it by one unit up, okay? If you do that, you get a graph like this, right? It will start from here, okay? Obviously, you have a turning point here, okay? Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> right, turning point here, then another x intercept there, obviously, so it goes like this. Right, no, wait, so wait, one, one, so so one. one. It's supposed to be by one and then two seven two. Sorry, <laughs> so if you sketch it now, it will look like this. <laughs> okay, this is not safe, but it will look something like that. Let's check your graph. Okay, it has got a minimum turning point on the x, on the x axis. Okay, it has got a minimum turning point on the x axis there. Where you have got x equal to so You see, I was trying to link my knowledge of y equal to sine x and sine x equal to x. Right. I'm working to sketch the graph without a table. I was working with this. Why you got to sign it? Because that's the basic graph. So you have to memorize that. And then you play around with it. Okay, so the graph will look like that. So this will be shear of x. Okay, is that what you got? Yes. All right, I can ask you some nice questions from, from these two graphs. Right, can you tell can you tell me or write down your answer? For what values of x? Okay, for what values of x is? Uh well let's say f of x times g of x is less than zero. Right? F of x times g of x is negative. 
For what values of x is that true? Write your answer. Write your answer. For what values of x is f of x times g of x less than 0? For g of x times g, uh, sorry, for f of x times g of x to be less than 0, it means either f of x is negative and g of x is positive or vice versa. So you must see now on the graph, where is the graph about there? Or one of the two is about the x axis, the other one is below the x axis in the same interval. Please write your answer. You should not take more than one minute to, to, to get the answer. There. <laughs> For what values of x? Okay, the f of x times g of x less than zero. Can you tell me? From zero to nine. From zero to nine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let me warn you. F of x times g of x means the y value for f of x times the y value for g of x. Their product is negative. So. F of x can be positive whilst g of x is negative, or f of x can be negative whilst f of x, so the g of x is positive. So those are the two scenarios, right? If f of x is positive, it means f of x will be above the x-axis. Where is it above the x-axis? Okay? Whilst g of x will be below the x-axis. Well, I'm sure you can see that from 0 to 90 here, f of x is negative, but g of x is positive up to there. Do you see that? So if you multiply their y values, you get an answer which is negative. So it means the first solution is going to be x lies between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay? Then, from 90 to 270, both graphs are above the x-axis, which means they are positive. Are you following that? Yes. Then suddenly, g of x continues to be positive, gets to zero, then continues to be positive, and then f of x becomes negative. So the second, so the second solution is going to be when x is between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. So those will be your two answers for such a question. So, what can you do? Can you see that the zero is included? No. no. But it's minus okay. two and one. Look, if there is no equal sign, then you can't no, include it. Okay? You can't include the zero because there is no equal sign. Are you following? Yes. Okay. What if I give you a question like this? If I say, for what values of x is f of x minus g of x? Well, okay, let me make it uh, less than less than zero. What would be your answer? Can you write down your answer for what values of x is f of x minus g of x less than zero?
Okay, just to give you a hint, was to work with it as it is it with challenge. I know. Do you see that you can simplify this? You can take the minus g of x to the what? To to the right hand side. Right? So that it will become f of x is less than g of x. That way it will become better or a little bit easier. What does this mean? What does this mean here? But it's a hint which will help you. Yes. You see, what this means is that f of x is below. It's below. Because it says f of x is less than g of x. So g of x is above f of x. The sine graph is above the cos graph. What interval is that? Or how many values of x satisfy that? We just look at the graph. Okay, then tell us the answer quickly. We need to go. Remember, okay, look here. The sine graph is above the cos graph. So it's going to be it's going to be from from x equal to 0 and I have your attention. It's going to be from x equal to 0. I'm sure you can see that the, the green graph is above until this point where they become what? Equal. So, what is the value of x here? Okay. What's the value of x there? How do you want Okay. Here is 30. <laughs> look, look here. Here is 30. That's 40. Uh, sorry, 60, 90, 120, 150. Yeah, it's really Okay, all right, look here. How many divisions are there between 0 and 90? How many? How many? There are three squares. So, hey, listen. This is not difficult. So, this is one thing. So, one of the solutions. But so what if the drawing is not accurate? Okay. okay. Generally, when you write a test, if you have a question like this, we provide you with a nice diagram. Okay. But no, and the diagram will be very clear. You will see. But most of the time they say it's exactly right. So this is 150. Wait, wait. From this point here, f of x is a, it is above g of x. So we don't want that until this point. But from this point going that way, the sign graph is also above the cost graph. So your two answers for that, it will be between 0 and 150. And the second answer, it will be, well, it will be 270 and 360. Okay.